Okay, so Tenet is a pretty mind-bending movie that deals with the complexities of entropy, theoretical physics and the flow of time. Throughout this video, we're going to be going through the ins and outs of the science behind the film and also giving our thoughts on how it all works. There will be heavy spoilers here, so if you haven't had the time to check out the movie yet, then I highly recommend that you turn off now. Make sure you drop a thumbs up if you enjoy the video and please subscribe to the channel for videos like this every day. Without the way, this is the Heavy Spoilers Show, I'm your host Paul, now let's get into the science behind Tenet. Okay, so Tenet subscribes to the theory that there exists only one timeline and that if one were to travel back to the past, they would not be able to alter things and instead would end up simply playing into the events that happened so that the future could follow the same course. This means that time is not malleable and everything that will happen will happen exactly how it's supposed to. In theoretical physics, there actually exists a manner of thinking known as the block universe theory, which states that all of time is happening at once and we merely give it its notion of the past, present and future because of our inability to comprehend its vastness. It's something that fiction has toyed with, most notably Dr. Manhattan, who was able to see every moment in his life simultaneously, but the depths of it go far beyond comic book characters. Now time is very difficult to explain and I'll try my best to go over the block universe theory with diagrams and relatable things, but do bear with me. Before going into everything though, we have to discuss what space time is. Now space time is the measurement of the three dimensions of space fused with time which creates a four dimensional manifold that can be carried across into coordinates. I'm going to be predominantly using this image of a grid in order to map out exactly what space time is and how these building blocks of it fall in line to create a precise measurement that we can understand. I'm going to be labeling this your day. I'm not spying on you, D don't, don't, don't check behind the curtain. But once you get to grips with this model, it should hopefully help you get your head around the entire thing. Okay, so imagine this is actually your day mapped out in the form of a cube. At 8am you wake up, so we would mark down this time on the cube and because we know the location of your home, because I am spying on you, we can mark down the exact coordinates of this giving us a precise moment of space time once we also factor in today's date. Now imagine each one of these cubes within the cube is a point in your day. Because we have the location and time that you are at a said location, we can map out precise coordinates. Get off YouTube, you're supposed to be at work. No, but we could mark out the entire day, minute by minute, hour by hour, and create a perfect picture of your routine. Wait, why Why are the coordinates of when you go to bed different or when you w wake up? Hey, that, that's my mom's house. No, but that's pretty much space time in as simplified a way as I can present it. Now, if we look at that entire block as one day and then put it into a bigger cube, we could actually map out the entirety of your life day to day with us potentially having precise coordinates for every single moment of your life. They even have a scene in Interstellar in which we can sort of see every single moment laid out like this and that's probably going to give you a much better understanding of the, the block universe theory than I ever could because I suck. But you bring this all together on a grander scale of not just your life but every single thing in the entire universe and we have a complete map of everything with all time happening at once. Similar to molecules within a brick, each minute, each moment is helping to make up the whole, but our brains are just too focused on the here and now to see the bigger picture. Now what the characters in Tenet do is that they reverse their entropy in order to move backwards through time. Typically, we move forward, viewing the past as the past and the future as the future, but the time inversion in Tenet allows someone to change their perspective so that they move backwards through the block. But what is entropy exactly? Well, the LA Times spoke to theoretical physicist Claudia Duram and she had this to say about it. Entropy is the measure of the level of order or the level of information. There's a really fundamental law in physics telling us that entropy always increases. On average, things get more and more disorganized. That's why we grow older, our bodies get slowly more and more disorganized. That's why it's much easier to destroy something than to construct something. At the physical level, if you have a box and you put some gas in it, the gas will start taking up the whole space. It will spread and get more and more disorganized. When entropy increases, it means things are becoming less and less organized. 
So entropy is pretty much the measure of disorder in thermodynamics. For example, if we smash some glass, the glass will fracture, but at no point will it move back together and it will remain in this disordered state. When discussing if it was possible to invert the entropy of an object, Claudia stated, a fridge for instance is a device where you lower the entropy so that things are cooler. When things are cooler, they have less entropy. If you think of ice, it's cooler and static and well organized. When you heat it up, the entropy increases and it becomes liquid and it then becomes a gas and it becomes less organized. A fridge or freezer inverts it for you, so we know that it's very possible to have devices that reverse entropy, but it doesn't mean that time goes the other way in your fridge. When I put food in my fridge, it doesn't get fresher and fresher every day, but it's definitely possible to have a device that decreases the entropy of an object. The connection with having the internal clock of that object going backwards is a bit of an extrapolation. That's part of the poetry, right? That's the fiction in the science fiction. So there are several things that will happen, but the way the film presents it is different to how we truly understand entropy in real life. Now in my research, an interesting thing that I found is that you would actually need to take oxygen back with you, so Nolan was indeed correct. However, where things would fall apart is through our eyesight. We are able to see things because light hits an object and then bounces into our eyes. However, if time were reversed, the light would travel backwards from our eyes, then hit the object before traveling back to the light source. So we wouldn't actually see objects and instead we would simply see the light. This would mean that we couldn't actually see what was around us and thus moving would be extremely difficult. Sorry for ruining the entire film for you when you watch it back. Now, when discussing the whole heat and freezing thing as well that happens in the movie, Claudia also dismissed this as not being the case, stating that that's absolutely not what would happen. It's like saying if something was white, it would become black. It's not like everything becomes the opposite of each other. The reason we feel heat is because molecules in the air hit a surface. That's what we feel, the constant hitting of particles on us. If time went backwards with respect to us, the molecules would hit the other way, but they would still hit. We would still feel them hitting, and we would still feel this notion of heat. So no, the protagonist wouldn't get hypothermia from being set on fire. However, this is just a film at the end of the day, and I think it's, you know, it's a pretty cool effect. Now, similar to Interstellar, though the science isn't completely sound, I think it makes for a really fun ride, and I have to say that the more and more I watch Tenet, the more I appreciate its little intricacies and use of time to explain its story. Claudia says that time travel is an impossibility, but in this particular case, it's not really time travel, more inverting the notion of how we perceive time. This means that things still do not change, but rather, we experience them in a totally different manner due to the cause and effect nature of the universe being reversed. The characters in the movie are all beholden to the structures of time and how things are in place, and though they believe that they have free will, when it boils down to it, they really don't. Thus, Neil always has to sacrifice himself no matter what, and things have to happen the way they have to happen. I'm not crying, you're crying. Now, I'd love to hear your thoughts on the science behind the film, and if there's anything you'd like to add, then please drop a comment below. If you enjoy this video and want something else Tenet related to watch, then make sure you check out our breakdown of Neil's timeline which is going to be linked at the end. Don't forget we're also giving away a free copy of the Christopher Nolan collection and all you have to do to be on the chance of winning is like the video, subscribe to the channel and drop a comment below. The winner is going to be chosen at random tomorrow on the 30th of September so make sure you get involved. If you want to support the channel and get to see content early then please consider clicking the join button below. You can also come chat to us on our Discord server linked in the description or heavy spoilers on Twitter. Thanks for making it till the end of the video. You've been the best. I've been Paul. I'll see you next time. Take care. Peace.